There are over 18,000 licensed taxi drivers here in London. We all drive the same vehicle, we all work at the same metered rate, we all work in the same area. We're effectively direct competition with one another. But thankfully, in the trade, there's a few unwritten rules that help govern ourselves. My name's Tom Hutley, I'm a London taxi driver, and I'm gonna be sharing the mysterious world of taxi etiquette. Let's get started with taxi ranks. In months like January and February, taxi ranks generally tend to move a bit slower. They're also heavily oversubscribed because there's less work on the streets. So drivers are eager more than ever to try and join a taxi rank. The issue is, is when people don't move up. Take Victoria Station, for instance. There's actually four sections to this taxi rank. Two over in Terminus Place, one behind me in Wilton Road, and there's a further feeder rank on Vauxhall Bridge Road. Now, when the ranks get longer and longer, there's obviously different points where they have to go through traffic lights to join. So, if a driver doesn't move up, or if they miss the traffic light, there could be loads of jobs going at the front. But because the taxis can't quite move up fast enough, people can't actually get on the back of the rank because it's still overextending. Now, this mistake could be genuine. You know, the reader might be engrossed in their book or, you know, they've not, not looked up and not seen it. Although some drivers do do it intentionally to ensure that they are at the front most bit of their feeder. We'll find out about that in a minute. So some of the longer ranks are split into sections called feeders. They're called feeders because one portion feeds into the next. Now, the juicy bit with feeder ranks is that they are a rank in their own right. Take here at Sloan Square, for example. It's one giant taxi rank, but there's three portions of the rank. Two feeders, one final bit. So the final part is over my shoulder, that green cab where someone's just got in right now. But there's two feeders before you get round to that part. The juicy bit is, is that if you're at the front of one of those feeder portions, you don't have to be at the very, very front. You can just be at the front of your own rank and you get the job if someone comes up to you. The reason for this is because if it's a really long rank, it's not a good thing to say to the customer, ah, you've got to go all the way to the other side of the square. And chances are, the rank might have moved and it's kind of awkward if you say, oh, you've got to go over there and you've moved forward and then you're still the same cab that person initially approached. So because the ranks are long, it might be a very long distance for the customer to walk. Generally accepted practice is that each feeder portion is its own rank. That's the very final portion of the rank. Behind that tree, that driver is the frontmost cab. That's filled up. Therefore, all the drivers have to fill up this portion here. Space for four cabs, no drivers there yet. He'll join up, he's looking over to the right, he's seen a driver's moved off. Is he gonna hang up? He might wanna hang up. There we go, another driver's come to join behind. That purple cab now moves off and joins that rank over there with the three cabs over there. So this driver over here, if someone approaches him, he's more than entitled to the job. He's only just joined the rank Whereas those three, especially that purple one, he's now got to wait and go through it. You can see why it can be a bit of an attractive prospect for a driver to try and hold back on this. Luckily, there's always a driver generally behind you to kind of push them on quite neatly. Do you want to know what's just as tasty as being at the very front of a feeder rank? That is why food. Why food is so damn tasty. I genuinely look forward to the point in my day when I can guzzle on one of these. There'll be some kind of meal in my day, usually when I get to town around lunch, I don't really want to stop, so I'll grab one of these because I'll just keep a stock of them in my cab or today I'm out filming, so I've got plenty in my bag because I never know when hunger's going to strike, where I'm going to be. Well, 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 what have we got here then? So this month, I've managed to get my hands on the creamy cookie flavor. Now this will sell out fast. It's one of Y Food's most popular flavors, so grab it whilst you can. For everyone who's watching this video, Y Food are giving you 10% off your entire order. You can do it on any size, any products, 10% using my exclusive code, taxi-youtube. Or just hit the link in the description down below. And I personally want to thank everyone who's purchased Y Food through this channel. They supported this channel for over 18 months now. Can't believe it. If you haven't ordered them before, I can honestly say you won't be disappointed with them. It's the reason why I still partner with them to this day. And big thank you for everyone who has purchased from them because that directly supports this channel. I could not do it without their work. Now, let's go to another station and learn a bit more about that contentious taxi etiquette. Brimming a job. Now, happens on the street, and of course it happens at ranks as well. And generally goes like this. Customer goes up to the very frontmost cab and says, driver, can you take me to? And the driver will give an excuse to the effect of, sorry love, car machine doesn't work, uh, my locks don't work, um, job's too short, anything like that. And the idea is, is they can pick and choose their jobs. It's a big no-no and it's wrong for a couple of reasons. 
number one, it directly affects the customer. You know, that customer's getting a raw deal. They then got to then go to the second cab. They feel like a bit unwanted. Taxi driving is customer service at the end of the day. Number two, a driver can't refuse a job unless it's over 12 miles or it's likely to take over one hour in total duration. They can refuse the job if the passenger is drunk or disorderly. And number three, the driver shouldn't be able to pick and choose jobs. Some people would say, well, if he turns down that job, that driver should just leave the rank immediately. But you shouldn't be turning down jobs first and foremost. When you join a taxi rank, it is a gamble. You get what you're given. It doesn't matter how long you've been waiting there for. It could be hour, two hours. Just deal with it, take the job, move on. It's customer service at the end of the day. The customer wants to go somewhere, they should be able to just jump in your cab and go straight away. This, of course, isn't to be confused with actually giving the passenger genuine advice. Now, I've had it when I'm at, like, say, King's Cross, and someone says, oh, driver, can you take me to the British Library? Well, I'll let them know how close the British Library is, and then it's down to that passenger. They might say, well, yeah, but I've got really bad mobility issues, or I've got a lot of heavy cases, I need to be dropped off there. Fine, hop on in, let's go. At the end of the day, taxi driving is customer first. Overranking. What is this exactly? Well, a taxi rank is a designated area where taxis can queue on the street to get a job. So, of course, in particular busy areas, you know, stations, major department stores like Harrods behind us, there'll be a designated area for taxis to rank. But when it comes to times like January or February, historically quite a slow season for work in the cabs, then people will have a habit of overranking. Harrods is probably the best example of this. So on the rank on the front here, there is actually a camera that spots if you overrank onto the zigzags. Because of course, all the traffic goes up Brompton Road and it's an absolute nightmare for anyone coming westbound. The best example of this is on the back door of Harrods and it's Kensington and Chelsea's whack-a-mole strategy for ridding overranking or congestion in that area. So first of all, starting off with a yellow box junction, meaning that you can't stop in that box junction if you're exit road isn't clear. Secondly, they put in a no right turn, so there's no right turn into Basil Street. And then thirdly, and most recently, is a no U-turn on Walton Street. They knew that drivers would go hands placed, left Walton Street, and then do a U-turn so they can go forward into Basil Street. Of course, that's been wiped out as well. It just gives you an indication of how much of a nuisance this can be in certain areas. Not every taxi rank has the facilities for drivers to overrank it. Not giving way to a cab that's POB. What's POB? Means passenger on board or they've been hired. If I'm coming along this stretch of Bayswater Road and there's a cabbie wanting to pull out of a side turn in, maybe wants to pull into a side turn in, it makes sense that as I'm going slower because I'm looking for a job, that I might as well just give way to that cab driver. You know, for that instance, that driver there, he's probably going to Praed Street entrance of Paddington. Quite a common route. You come along Bayswater Road, right Hyde Park Street, and you work your way out to Praed Street. So, any cab that hasn't got a job on should give way to a driver that has got a job on. Why? Because it then ensures that that driver with the job is able to get there more efficiently. When you've got a passenger on, all you want to do is just get the passenger to their destination. And it's great for the passenger as well. They get let out. It's fantastic. But it's surprising just how many people don't do this. And amazingly, how many drivers got really upset by this. Do not overtake another cab for hire unless you're going to be immediately turning off at some point. So we understand a taxi rank because the frontmost cab is at the front and of course it's a queue of people after them. The cab at the front gets the job first, then followed by the next cab, so on, so on, so forth. A similar thing happens on the street. You have a lead cab and then there's a cab behind that, cab behind that. So as a result, you don't overtake taxis because you go in front of the lead cab it disrupts the order. That's the cab that's respectively at the front. Similar thing goes with pulling out in front of cabs. Think of it like going to the pub, right? And you walk up to the bar, you're about to go get your order in, and someone slides right in front of you. That is exactly what it is like here on the street. You're the lead cab, any hand that goes up is yours. You know, you make sure there's no taxi ranks around you, and effectively the streets are yours. But another cab might come along and slide on in. Now, some streets, it's easier than others. For instance, Oxford Street, single lane of traffic either direction, you're not gonna be overtaking anyone anytime soon, unless one pulls in, which of course, you can then overtake. But the reason why I'm standing on Piccadilly is because this is a little bit of an anomaly. Notably, when cabs come out of the Piccadilly underpass coming westbound, you'll get people hanging in the right-hand lane, hoping to get a hail from this side of the street, and you have people on the near side lane, you know, hoping to get the hail there. 
I was kind of always told that you always stay near the near side because that's where most people are going to hail you from. You're going to be on the near side, that's what you're going to be near. And of course, it then means you haven't got to cut across any lanes to pull back in to pick up the passenger. Haymarket, bit of an anomaly as well because it's three lanes of traffic all going in one direction. So which side of the street do you go on? There's theatres on either side. So respectively, a job could come from the east side or the west side of the street. When you think about it, that's kind of the weirdest thing about etiquette and any of these cultural norms is that it's just an accepted code. We all have this mutual desire not to kind of one-up each other. Super weird when you think about it. The late great cab driver Alf Townsend wrote of this in one of his books. There's this figure uh, that some of the older drivers may know of called Claude the Bastard. And Claude used to apparently just swoop in out of nowhere and just come in front of any cab and just nick jobs left, right and centre. And in theory, there's nothing stopping any cab driver from doing that. But etiquette, cultural codes, maybe as well, remembering that cab driver from time to time generally stops this from happening. But there is no rule or law against this, just a moral code that thankfully most of us abide by. Dropping a passenger off and instantly nicking the next job. This is the one that makes my blood boil the most. You're following a taxi that's POB. You're for hire, that's pretty clear. And you come down a street like this one, Wimpole Street or Harley Street or maybe a little narrow street in Soho, whatever. And because of how narrow the street is, it's not always ideal to drop off a passenger. You're going to block up the road in some way. But it's when the driver does this, they block the road, you can't get past the driver, they let their passenger out, someone then jumps straight back into their cab and away they go. They even have the cheek to look in the mirror, see that you're behind them and they still let it go anyway. So annoying. Greed, just greed. The etiquette for me is that I'll always lock the door and if a customer comes up, you then say, no, sorry, there's a driver behind me. I was blocking them. Can you go see that driver? You know, even when you come to pull out after you've done something like this, you're always going to be looking in your mirrors to see who you're pulling out on. And if you're pulling out on a driver who's got their light on, common sense is to let them pass and then you just go to the back of them. What's wrong with that? It just comes down to greed at the end of the day. Just don't be overly greedy. Um, but that is definitely the one that boils my blood the most. I hate it when that happens. Well, there was a taxi at that taxi rank behind us. That's the Fortnum and Mason rank. And another cardinal sin is nicking a job from a rank. What does it mean? Well, you'll see taxi ranks all across London, major stations, hotels, establishments, etc. So this one's Fortnum and Mason. And when there is a queue of taxis outside, those taxis are exclusively for this area. Just because they're ranked outside Fortnum and Mason, doesn't mean they're just for customers of Fortnum and Mason. That could be anyone in this immediate area. If the driver comes along, I go to hail it down, that driver should say, no nah, mate, you've got to go see that taxi across the street there because he's waiting in the area. If for some reason there's no taxis on that rank, then it's fair game. You can be hailed down, look across, no one at the rank, bosh, the job is yours. But if someone's at the rank, the job is exclusively theirs as they are waiting in this designated area. Getting flagged on the zigzags and then you try and avoid them and another driver picks up. This is pretty frustrating stuff. You'll have seen this in some of my videos before whereby it's illegal for me to stop on the zigzags and I'll do everything I can to try and beckon that customer along so I can pick them up in a safe location. It's safer for the customer, but also it's against the law for me to stop on the zigzags because it obstructs the view of the crossing. So you'll do the right thing by not stopping on the zigzags, whereas a driver behind you might then swoop in and go, you know what, I'll have that job and it's so frustrating. Another one is when a customer is so desperate to get in a cab and they'll hail one taxi and then look in another direction and they'll hail another taxi. Now, if I see this go on and the other driver is pretty much there, I'll tell that customer, no, you need to go to that first driver. You've hailed them, don't then just start hailing more and more cabs. I think this comes down to sort of customer sort of patience. They just want to get in the cab and go. They don't understand the kind of etiquette between drivers and often they don't have respect for the road and how dangerous it might be for a driver to stop. It generally just comes back to sharing the work, not being greedy. If you see that they've clearly hailed another driver, I don't want to upset that driver or take away that driver's job when it's very clear that that customer hailed that driver first. It's all about helping your fellow driver out. An example is letting a driver out of a side street. Now we've learned about how if the driver coming out the side street has got a job on board and you haven't, then you should generally always give way to the driver who's got a job on board. Let them get their passenger to where they need to go to. But what about if you're both empty, if you're both searching for a job? Well, you can let the driver out and of course that driver's now in front of what was the lead cab. The driver who's now in front can do one of several things. 
Firstly, they could just pull off into a completely different direction. So it lets the lead driver behind have the lead again. Secondly, if a job goes up, then the driver could point out that there's a job there so the driver behind them knows. Thirdly, they could just drive past that job so the hand, the passenger waiting, can go to the driver behind. Or they could pull over to the side of the road, make a gesture for that driver to then overtake them. It's much like the taxi rank example. The driver that's front on the street is the lead cab and if you pull out in front of that cab, you then upset that flow you have then pushed in front of that lead cab. When taxi drivers will have beef with another taxi driver or another driver in front of passengers, or the 21st century version of this on Twitter, taxi driving is very much public facing and service based. So even if you haven't got a passenger in the cab, the fact that there's gonna be people, members of the public around, witnessing any of these interactions going on, it's just mind boggling why any driver would want to engage in it. You know, same thing on Twitter. When someone writes up they've had a bad experience in an Uber, and you get 20 odd cab drivers jump in and say, well, you shouldn't have got an Uber then, blah, 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 shame on you kind of thing. I just think it's not professional. I always think of the idea of speak favorably of your competitors. End of the day, if you provide a better service, you haven't got to look down on your competitors and say they're worse. You just got to say, yeah, they're all right, but our USPs or our high selling points are this. Another one is maybe if you've got a passenger on board, for instance, I seldom use my horn in the cab, right? Because it's quite a loud, very abusive horn. So I very, very rarely use it. And if I have a passenger on board, then I'm only using that thing if it's a matter of life and death. A passenger has got inside of a taxi because they know it's the best form of transport in the world. You don't get anything better. Maybe first class on a particular airline, but even then it's not that personal service that you get with a London taxi. So they don't want to be hearing the driver shouting and moaning at someone else. They don't want to hear that horn going off. They want smooth, zen-like experience. And I feel like as a driver, it's the best opportunity that we have to be able to give passengers that level of service. And that is the point of etiquette. It creates order, otherwise we would most certainly have chaos. And would we really want chaos from what is arguably the best transport service in the world? I don't think so. Speaking of the best, then I'd highly recommend checking out my video, the five best places to eat in London. These are great quick bites that you can grab as a cab driver or anyone visiting London and highly recommend that over here.